So I'm going to have a look here at the results from a recent headshot shoot uh, with my model, uh, Ronnie. And uh, looking back through the images, I see that I ran into a couple of problems. And one of those was that my original intention was to light the background so that it would become a pure white background and then still have a proper exposure on my subject. Um, and the problem that I had is that my lighting ratios are off. Uh, because my strobe was too close to the background and I had originally set the exposure for it uh, where it was, what I found once I went to light my subject was that I had a really bad hot spot uh, that was occurring where the strobe was hitting my backdrop, as you can see here where it's blown out, and this gradual fall off of light um, that's occurring across the background. Couple that with the fact that my subject is still slightly exposed relative to uh, the background that's burned out a bit, and I have a couple of problems. So, namely, I, I want this this slightly grayish or less than pure white background to go to pure white in my final image, which is fine, except that if I adjust the exposure for my image for my subject, I find that the background ends up becoming um, blown out quite a bit, and it's especially troublesome around fine hairs like we see here because uh, it will it'll blow those details away because the background gets so overdriven. So for instance this is just a neutral exposure from the raw file now. If I were to make an exposure compensation to lighten up my subject or right up to the edge of lightening my subject what I find is that I lose a lot of details from these fine hairs where the background is overriding or overdriving uh, above those details. So for instance, with an exposure set for my subject right now, this is what ends up happening to those hairs against the background. If you compare this to the neutral exposure, you'll see that I'm actually losing quite a lot of detail and hair information here uh, for my final image. So the solution that uh, I was going to try is to approach it as a composite image. Now, technically, I should just reshoot this image. Uh, my lighting was off, and I just need to dial that in first. And it would be a lot easier for me to physically dial in the lighting correctly uh, in the shoot the first time around. But you know what? This is a good learning experience to try some other methods for um, learning how to fix this problem if we were to run into it again. So I'm going to forge ahead with it and use it as a learning experience. So I'm going to uh, create a composite image then to create my final uh, output so that I have my subject properly uh, exposed against a pure white background. Now I can't do it with a single exposure right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two uh, exposures from my raw file. One neutral as we see now where I can retain all the details of the hair and then what I'm going to do is use a really cool fork of GIMP to extract my subject and all these fine hairs from the background and I'm going to use that in conjunction with a properly exposed subject version and bring the two together to create my final image. So what I'll do is I'll export a uh, neutral exposure now that has all these hair details and walk through how I'm going to uh, extract those things uh, using GIMP. So when I extract this what I'll find is that in my uh, in my GIMP, I'm actually not using uh, a normal release of GIMP. What I'm using is the RGG YAN fork of GIMP that includes a new foreground select method, um, which is really really cool. So it's actually using a much more advanced foreground selection uh, method than the one that comes standard in Stable GIMP now. Uh, the Stable GIMP version now is uh, based on the SIOX method of uh, foreground extraction and the problem that it has is that the alpha mask that it creates is binary meaning that either the pixels are entirely transparent or not. The alpha matting mask that RGG Yan uses in his fork um, is fantastic in that it will allow for partial transparent pixels uh, to be extracted and it makes a much much cleaner uh, job of extracting things like these fine hairs from this background even though the background is not a consistent color because of the uh, graduated light fall off and the way that this works is that um, you'll select the foreground select tool 
and it'll ask you for an initial selection around the object. You're going to want, if you can, to do a, a reasonably good job of isolating um, the fir this first pass at a mask because it will help to cut down on the computational time required later to, uh, to actually do the extraction, meaning that if you do a reasonably good job here and give it a lot of pixels that you can identify as foreground background, it's going to make the, uh, the algorithm's job a lot faster than if you just leave a lot of unknown pixels out there. So once you've traced around the rough uh, matting that you want to have for your foreground object, the, the tool will then allow you to mark uh, what you know to be foreground objects uh, right now. So painting right now will allow me to mark what I know for a fact to be foreground objects. Now uh, you're going to want to make sure that this happens all in one pass. So it's don't paint some, unclick, uh, and then paint some more because um, at some point it's going to start the algorithm to um, to determine your foreground object and unfortunately it's an incredibly intensive process for it to do so you're going to have to wait a little while to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a very large brush and I'm going to paint over the things I know to be a foreground uh, object right now that are important to me to make a quick pass here. And then once I filled it all the way in, I release the mouse, the algorithm will start working. You should probably go get a cup of coffee now if you're using this on a large image the way I am. And what we can see is that the tool will mark in uh, this blue color all of the objects that it has selected for extraction. And that's just a single pass. Now there's a couple of places where there might be some slightly strange results, but honestly, that's a very clean mask to pull off of um, 
off of what I have. I could continue to refine this further if I wanted to uh, by choosing to uh, mark more of the foreground or background uh, manually at this point. For instance, I might come in here and mark part of this uh, just off this hair as uh, the background object. Or I might come in and say, well, these places right through here I know for a fact to be part of my foreground. And I can do that, and I'm going to mark foreground again here, for instance, and say, no, I know for a fact that this set of hairs is all in the foreground. And as soon as I let go of the mouse again, it's going to start the tool, uh, and it's going to refine the mask that it has so far using this extra information that you've given it. After you've had a chance to go get a cup of coffee and come back, you'll find uh, the results of what the tool has found for a foreground. When you're happy with the final results, Hit enter on your keyboard and it'll create a new layer with your foreground extracted like so. And even better is that it has a set of semi-transparent pixels based on uh, the extraction algorithm. So to see them clearly for instance I'm going to add a new uh, white layer underneath here and look at the results. This is a significantly better result than you could have gotten using the uh, SIOX method of foreground extraction or any kind of other um, you know, contiguous color replacement or color selection, which would have been a real pain due to the fact that there was a graduated background from the light fall off on the original image. So my plan at the moment is with this with this layer with the extracted hairs, I'm going to combine this with another copy of the raw image but exposed for my subject correctly this time. And then I'm going to compose or composite the two images uh, such that the majority of my image will be the uh, correctly exposed image of my model. But any of the edges out here against the background I'm going to keep as uh, as pure white, so I'm going to take it from this layer that we see now. Um, this has already gone on probably longer than it needs to, so I'm going to save uh, the actual combination of the two uh, sections together for the next video, uh, which will be up shortly. Thanks.